the High Performance Networks Research Group, part of the Smart Internet Lab at the University of Bristol, we are designing and implementing intelligent systems ready for the next generation of quantum security networks. In our group, we are developing and implementing programmable data encryptors based on field programmable gate arrays, FPGAs working at 100 gigabit per second encryption rates and capable of real-time on-demand encryption configuration. In our demonstration, we emulate two telecommunication sites. Each site has a quantum key distribution QKD, unit, an FPGA-based encryptor, and servers for key management and communication with devices. Our objective with this demo is to dynamically connect a client to a streaming video server, while providing adjustable levels of security. The security levels are determined by the key generation capabilities of the QKD devices and the amount of data encrypted with the same key material. The best possible scenario would be encrypt each bit of data with at least one bit of secret key. This is known in cryptography as one time pad. Unfortunately, this would demand key generation rates in the order of hundreds of gigabit per second, orders of magnitude higher than the best current QKD technology available can achieve. Our system currently can change keys every second, implying on sharing the same key with 12.5 gigabytes of data at the maximum 100 gigabit per second transmission rate. We now explore our testbed in more details. Today's demonstrated testbed can be divided into three layers. The control layer, which contains Ono's SDN controller, and the Quantum SDN app, built as a companion application to work together with Ono's. An agent layer, with software that bridges the communication between the SDN controller and the devices. And the data layer, which contains the transmission equipment and the computational servers that host the virtual network functions. Today's demo is organized into three phases. In the first phase, we demonstrate the classical controllability by establishing light paths between our encryptors. At this point, there is no encryption and no key material is used. Then, we show the flexibility of our encryptors by changing the encryption algorithm to AES-256 in real time. On this stage, we also explain the key exchange process. Finally, on the last phase, we present the SDN monitoring capabilities. We configured three thresholds associated with the number of keys available in the key management stores. When TH1 is reached, the SDN controller starts the QKD devices. After at TH2, it reduces the key consumption rates to preserve the remaining keys and avoid using them all. In a case that no more keys are available, the SDN controller halts the transmission. Finally, after a few minutes, the QKD devices start to generate keys. And when a healthy number of keys is generated, the QKD devices can be shut down and time shared among another clients in the network. Without further ado, let's start. To improve the understanding of this demo, we devised the software that provides near real-time visualization of the current active modules. This software also displays a dashboard that reflects the information the SDN controller has access at a given time. It also shows the number of keys available for the connection between the two hardware encryptors. Before this demo started, we ran the system to populate the key databases, and the resulting statistics are displayed. As a consequence, we start our demo with some keys available in the key stores. It's worth mentioning that although we are only displaying the information associated to one particular link, the SDN controller has visibility over the whole network. As previously mentioned, this demo is divided into three phases. During the first one, we demonstrate the classical controllability. Our goal is to connect the video client on the right side to the streaming server on the left side. We use a remote desktop application to connect to both the client and the server. Additionally, to the VLC video software, the server also contains a running ping application to help us visualize the connections faster. To create a connection, we need first to establish a light path between the two FPGAs. This is done 
by cross-connecting the appropriate ports on the two optical switches. On top of the screen, we show the interfaces of the two optical switches used in our testbed. On the left, we have OXC1 and on the right, OXC2. First, the SDN controller activates the OXC driver to send flows to the OXC agents, first on the left, then on the right. As a result, we can see the changes on the OX interfaces on the top of the screen. This operation happens much faster, in the order of milliseconds. We added an artificial delay to allow visualization. Next, the controller needs to configure the FPGAs. At first, the SDN controller sends the command to one of the FPGA agents. This agent requests its peer to change encryption. This encryption takes about 10 seconds per FPGA to be finalized. After the peer succeeded to change encryption, the first FPGA agent changes the encryption on its local FPGA. The new window at the center of the screen shows the log of the FPGA agent. The encryptors are configured with a plain algorithm, meaning no encryption. At the end of this configuration, we have a working light path between the client and the server. This can be seen by the working ping application in the server terminal. After a while, the video streaming resumes. The objective of phase 2 is to demonstrate the configurability of the encryptors and its interactions with the key management stores, KMSs. First, the SDN controller sends a request to the FPGA agent to start the changing algorithm procedure. It starts by requesting its peer to change the algorithm. As can be noticed, once the procedure starts, both the ping and the video streaming halts. When it's done, the initial FPGA agent configures its local encryptor. Our target is to program the FPGAs with an AES-256 algorithm and a key consumption rate of one new key every second. Since the data link between the two encryptors is 100 gigabit per second, this configuration ensures a new key is used for every 12.5 gigabytes of data, approximately. At this point, we can explain how the key exchange is performed. First, the FPGA agent requests a new key from its local QKD agent. The QKD agent fetches a new key from its KMS and returns both the new key ID and the key itself. When the starting FPGA agent receives a new key, it requests its peer FPGA agent to fetch the same key ID from its local QKD agent. The QKD agent retrieves the associated key to the key ID provided. The peer FPGA agent on the right then pushes the key to the FPGA and then acknowledge the success or failure of the operation. Upon receiving a success, the starting FPGA agent pushes the key to its local encryptor. We can now see this process in action. First, the FPGA agent acquires a new key. Then, it requests its peer to retrieve the same key from its KMS. The peer agent then pushes the key to the decryptor FPGA and replies. After the acknowledgement, the key is pushed to the encryptor. The screen displays the resulting log for this particular key exchange. What you see now are the terminals running the FPGA agents on top, the QKD agents at the middle, and the KMSs and the QKD devices at the bottom. 
we can see the start of the key exchange process when a new key is requested. The KMS1 reserving a new key, the ID of the new key, the QKD agent replying to the FPGA agent, the key itself showed only for the demonstration purposes, the request made to the peer FPGA agent, the peer agent retrieving the key and pushing it to its local decryptor. Finally, the visualization software shows a steady decrease on the number of keys available on the key store. At this point, the SDN controller is monitoring the KMSs and it is ready to take actions based on configurable thresholds. The goal of this third and final part of this demonstration is to present the monitoring capabilities of the SDN controller. The SDN controller can be configured with three thresholds regarding the number of keys available on the key stores. Two out of those three are associated with a low number of keys. The third one relates to a satisfactory high number of keys. The first threshold reached is the low key warning. At this point, the SDN controller turns on the QKD devices. First, it is needed to establish a light path for the quantum channel. The SDN controller sends flows to the OXC agents. Shortly after, we can perceive the new connections on the optical switches web interfaces. Since it takes a while for the QKD equipment to start the key generation, the keys keep going down. After a few seconds, the second threshold is reached, the critically low number of keys warning. To prevent running out of keys and stop the data transmission, the SDN controller opts for reducing the key consumption rate until the QKD devices are generating new keys and a healthier amount of keys is available. We can perceive how the number of keys starts to go down slower. The holy grail of the quantum secured communications is the so-called one-time pads. Using one-time pads provide the absolute best security that could be achieved using symmetrical protocols such as AES and Camellia. This happens since even on an extremely unlikely scenario in which an attacker can guess the right key, only one frame would be compromised. The more often the keys are replaced, less data would be compromised in this extremely unlucky correct guess scenario. This is the reason behind the SDN controller reducing the key refresh ratio as a last measure before halting the transmission in case of absence of more keys. After some minutes since the start of the QKD system, new keys are generated and we reach the last threshold the satisfactory high key count. At this point, the QKD system is stopped and the cross connections that compose the quantum channel light path are removed. The same QKD devices can now be used in a time shared manner to generate keys for other links or clients. Finally, we terminate the classical connection by tearing down the light path between the two FPGAs. This concludes our demo. Thank you for your time and your interest.